Very good evening. Thanks for joining us here on The Big Focus. I'm Afrida Rahman Ali. This is the show that brings to light the biggest news story of the day. In The Big Focus today, we are going to talk about the power crisis in two states in India, Jammu and Kashmir and Punjab. In JNK, parts of the state are facing power outages for more than 16 hours. The demand is 3,000 megawatt and supply less than half of that. While shortage in open market is one reason, depleted capacity generation of JNK's own power projects has added to the woes. The Union Territory's power projects have an installed capacity of 1,211 megawatt but produce just over 450 megawatt. While the NHPC-owned projects in JNK have an installed capacity of 2,000 megawatts and they produce less than 1,400. So of this, Jammu and Kashmir receives a little over 150 megawatts. The officials now say that the state has a deficit of 2,300 megawatts. What is it really translating into? Of course, many different kinds of woes for the common man. First, the, uh, the fact of the matter is the power cuts, the electricity disruption is having a kind of a domino effect on many other surface, uh, services. We will listen in to what people have to say on this. Let me introduce our guests this evening. Jaiban Singh, uh, who is the media advisor, uh, BJP in uh, Punjab. Also, we have Ahbab Grewal, Ahmadmi Party spokesperson, Ifra Jan, spokesperson with the National Conference, and Ashwini Kumar Swain, who is a fellow in the Center for Policy Research. Very good evening to all of you. Thanks for joining us here on the program. Before we go across to the panel, let's listen in to the important voices coming in from Jammu and Kashmir, and then I'll go across to my colleague based in Srinagar. I say, पहले पहले बिजली अच्छी तरह से रहती थी विंटर्स में पता नहीं इस साल क्या हो गया यहाँ पे सुबह सुबह में प्रॉब्लम होती है शहरी में खाने में भी प्रॉब्लम होते हैं शाम को इफ्तारी होती है उस टाइम भी लाइट की प्रॉब्लम होती है जैसे कि आप देख सकते हैं कि हमारा जो शहरी का टाइम होता है बिल्कुल अंधेरा होता है और उस टाइम माना जाता है कि लोगों के पास इन्वर्टर होते हैं लेकिन वो गरीब तबका जिनके पास अभी जो है वो जैसे कि वो बोलते हैं ना कैंडल्स कैंडल्स के साथ शहरी करना या बिना जो है कह वो कहा जाएगा कि मतलब लाइट नहीं होती है अचानक से लाइट चली जाती है शहरी का टाइम है और बिल्कुल मस्जिदों में जाना होता है और मस्जिदों में वो शहरी के टाइम जाना और इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का दिक्कतों का सामना करना बहुत 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 मुश्किलों का सामना करना पड़ा देखिए पावर की सिचुएशन जो क्राइसिस बहुत है इफ्तार के टाइम शहरी के टाइम पावर कट हो, होता है बहुत तकलीफ है लोगों को गवर्नमेंट फ्लॉप है इस टाइम कोई कुछ सहूलियत नहीं है पावर के बाद क्राइसिस के यहाँ पर बहुत प्रॉब्लम है फेस हो रही है सुबह शाम बिजली नहीं होती है खासकर इफ्तार के टाइम चूँकि बाबरकत महीना चल रहा है और आज बड़ा दिन भी है रोज़े के टाइम जब हम इफ्तार करते हैं उस टाइम भी बिजली नहीं होती है जब हम शहरी खाते हैं उस टाइम भी बिजली नहीं होती है और जो सोलर सिस्टम है आज हमारे पास यहाँ मौसम भी अच्छा नहीं है वो भी डाउन हो रहे हैं हम कैसे अब इसका इंतज़ाम करेंगे हम खाए पियेंगे कैसे ये तो इसको गवर्नमेंट को इसके बारे में कुछ सोचना चाहिए इसके बारे में कुछ इंतजाम करना चाहिए जम्मू कश्मीर पूरे मुल्क को बिजली देता है पूरे मुल्क के कारखाने पूरे मुल्क के घर जो है हमारी बिजली से रोशन होते हैं और हमारे यहाँ तो बदतरीन किस्म का अंधेरे में हमें धकेल दिया है आज आपने देखा कि रमजान के मुबारक महीने में न तो इफ्तारी के वक्त बिजली न तो शहरी के वक्त बिजली और जम्मू में इतनी गर्मी में वहां भी बिजली का बहुत बुरा हाल है हैरानगी की बात है कि बाकी टाइम आपको लाइट है लेकिन शहरी के लिए जब उठते हो तो अंधेरा बाकी टाइम आपको लाइट है लेकिन इफ्तारी के टाइम अंधेरा जब तरावियां पड़नी होती हैं तो अंधेरा और उसके बाद फिर लाइट वापस कुछ तो हमारे जज्बातों का आप कदर करिए लेकिन हम शिकायत करने पे मजबूर होते हैं जब बाकी टाइम हमें लाइट दिखती है लेकिन जब हमें चाहिए होता है तब आप, आप हमें लाइट नहीं देते हो Remember, JNK is currently governed by the center. Uh, this, uh, therefore, the state leaders are expressing their anger against the center for the kind of situation. I want to go across to Ishan Wani, my colleague based in Srinagar. Ishan, give us an understanding of the level and extent of the problem. Which are the worst affected areas? What exactly is afflicting the state at the moment because of the power disruption? 
Uh, well, we also need to understand that why is there such a hue and cry? Because this is the month of Ramadan when most of the Muslims fast. And uh, given the fact that electricity cuts have been mostly witnessed during the Sehri and Iftari time, and that is the time when precisely people need most of the electricity. Given the electricity deficit, the, the, the government is not able to provide full electricity to the people at these precise points. During the day also, these cuts can be as long as six hours to seven hours, and only a few hours of electricity is being provided. Now, uh, dissecting it further to the rural and urban. In the rural areas, there are more than seven or eight hours of cut of electricity. And during the night time, these people are moved to use candles back again, given the fact that several of them don't have access uh, to modern gadgets of electricity. And that is why, you know, they are facing more trouble. Ifra Jan, if I can come to you first, is that the ground situation then, what we just heard from the angry citizens? Why? Do you think the situation has come to this? Is the center solely responsible uh, for this crisis or is there something that the successive governments also fail to maintain? You see, the last successive government that we've had, other than the BJP, was eight years back. So let's now stop blaming other parties and say, ye bhi, wo bhi, wo bhi, ye bhi. Now it's the BJP that's been in the state for eight years, directly or indirectly. Coming to the power crisis, Right now, the area where I live in is the heart of Srinagar city. And right now, we have 14-hour electricity cuts in 24 hours, which means we get 10 hours of electricity or even less in a day. It's affected the health sector. It's affected those patients who need oxygen 24 into 7. What do they do? It's affected our factories. It's affected whatever little economy goes on, all the banking, e-banking. Everything has been affected. Now, it's kind of an egg on face situation for a lot of us because if you remember, on August 5, 2019, we were told, at least the people of Jammu and Kashmir were told, that you guys give us some of your rights. You guys give us some of your rights, like the right to choose and make your own state assembly, the right to participate in the state assembly elections, the right to form a state government. You guys give these couple of rights to us. And what we will give in back to you is development. And that's why it's a lot more comical for us. Because right now, what we have seen, we neither have rights, the right to vote, uh, nor do we have the kind of freedom of speech. If you say something in Kashmir, if you wear a T-shirt, you will get arrested under UAPA. It's very common. So you will just be thrown in jail even without a whim. And now we neither have rights, nor do we have any development. And if you and coming to your question, why is it happening? You cannot look at it in a vacuum. The BJP government for past three years, especially after the abrogation of Article 370, has been completely focused on land acquisition projects. It now, so this land we are allotting to this company, that land we are allotting to that company. You know, as Rahul Gandhi had called them, Hamdo Hamare Do. It's constantly focused on what resource to allocate to a big company. It's completely, I mean, it's done nothing on educational front, nothing uh, to... Okay, I think we have lost the audio link uh, to Ifra Jan. So let me bring uh, in... Can you hear me? Okay, yes, go ahead. Hello? Please finish quickly. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Finish. Yeah, so I'm saying that the government is completely focused on this, you know, allocating projects to this company, that company, and it's completely ignored the people on ground. One other illustration of that is that in 2010, when it was our government, unemployment rate was around, say, 5 to 7 percent, according to the CMIE data. Today, in 2022, the same okay. No, no, let's stick to the power around. deficit issue. I mean, you know, because so we will digress from the vacuum. topic. I you do understand that the state vacuum. is currently catering only to 50% of its demand. So I want to ask Ashwini Swain that, you know, why have things come to this level that now out of the 50% also, of course, the priority then goes to the official buildings, the hospitals. So the citizens, the common man is left with nothing. In rural areas, uh, apparently it's worse. Uh, in, in the holy month of Ramzan, you heard the people of the state there uh, in a state of complete distress. But Ashwini Swain, where do you think things have gone wrong that it has reached this level? See, the mm, problem is it's not JNK only. At the moment, there's a national level shortage in terms of power. Uh, several other states are also facing it. 
And um, uh, the problems are multiple in this situation. There are multiple fault lines. Uh, one is we uh, really don't prepare for this sort of situations. Our power sector, which has been long uh, in a scarcity scenario, we always had uh, limited power available. It, uh, only over the last seven, eight years, we, we have got into a comfortable situation. But before that, the approach was whatever little resources we have, whom do we prioritize first? So we are following that. I, I, I probably don't know the, I actually don't know the exact precise situation and what is happening in JNK, but in several other states, what we hear is there's a coal shortage or for example, Punjab, which is one of the states you are going to discuss, uh, one third of their thermal capacity is under maintenance at this situation. And when we know that this is a period when the demand peaks, so uh, the, this, uh, this capacity should have been ready uh, for use in the month of April. So um, the uh, fault line here is we don't plan our resources uh, for, for this sort of time. So, and uh, this is mostly to blame on the utilities who, who are uh, responsible for doing this. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. The center is clearly uh, saying that a lot of it has got to do with the spike in the demand. Now, I'll go across to Jayaban Singh and Abhav Grewal in just a bit. We need to also put into perspective the situation in Punjab. There again, the crisis has worsened as five of the 15 thermal stations have stopped generating, leading to a shortfall of 2010 megawatts of electricity. The Punjab State Power Corporation Limited is forced to resort to prolonged load shedding across the state. Sources say that the power demand in the state is around 7,500 megawatts. Uh, PSPCL was able to supply only 6,700. So there is a deficit there and we are running on our screens the kind of stock that is left in these thermal plants. Both rural as well as urban areas are witnessing power cuts ranging from 2 to 10 hours. Let's listen in to the people of Punjab what the man on the street, what the people are going through, and also listen in to what the political voices have to say on this. वैसे अब मेरी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट से दरखास्त है कि वो इस टाइम पे जो पंजाब को प्रोवाइड करे कैसे भी किस तरह भी जे जो एक महीना दो महीने या लाइट जरूर जी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट प्रोवाइड करे किसी भी तरह लाइट देख लो अभी हम शॉपकीपर हैं अभी काम नहीं हो पा रहा हमारा तो सारा इलेक्ट्रिसिटी पर डिपेंड करता है हमारा काम रिपेयरिंग का रहता है सुबह से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी नहीं है सिर्फ से बोनी की है हमने बाद से 12 बजे अभी 3 बज रहे हैं लाइट ही नहीं है अभी जब भी समर सीजन शुरू होता है और पैडी सीजन शुरू होता है तो बिजली की डिमांड तो बढ़ती है हर वर्ष ऐसे ही होता है बढ़ती है डिमांड लेकिन इसका मतलब यह नहीं है कि हमारे पास सोर्सेज नहीं है हम वो डिमांड पूरी नहीं कर पाएंगे ऐसी कोई बात नहीं देखिए मार्च 2021 में देख लो तो हमने 7500 मेगावाट बिजली प्रोवाइड की थी तो अब मार्च 2022 में हमने 8500 मेगावाट दी है 1000 मेगावाट पहले से ज्यादा डिमांड बढ़ी हमने ज्यादा दी है ऐसे हम नेक्स्ट ये अप्रैल में मई जून जुलाई जब तक भी होगा हम सभी डिमांड जो वो पूरी करने जा रहे हैं मिस्टर अहबाब ग्रेवाल योर पार्टी इज इन अ रादर ट्रिकी सिचुएशन हियर आफ्टर प्रॉमिसिंग फ्री इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दिस इज व्हाट इट हैज कम टू इन द स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब पीपल आर रीलिंग अंडर अ मेजर क्राइसिस यू हर्ड द सिटीजंस वी ब्रॉट यू दोस वॉइसेस इट इज नॉट सिंपली इनफ टू कीप ब्लेमिंग द सेंटर इज इट Uh, well, definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, the problem with Punjab was that in Punjab, uh, the power uh, production was totally monopolized by private players. The government power plants, the public power plants, were totally ignored. And it, it, to the extent that the coal uh, mines allocated to Punjab, nobody in the past two governments even bothered to go there. to see if we could get coal or not now because of that monopolization the private players were having uh, uh, the run of the mill by doing whatever they wanted now as soon as our government came in we started working it's been hardly 40 45 days we started working on upgrading the network secondly the biggest problem with punjab was that almost 30% of the electricity was lost in theft and transmission losses now that has to be rectified 
Now, in that case, we are most definitely working very hard to get whatever we can from outside. But along with that, we are working overtime to make sure that our a government infrastructure is upgraded. The power grid is uh, made better. Most people, what they call kundi, uh, kundis in Punjab, because if somebody is using 100 units, uh, they end up wasting almost 150 units for that 100 units. So most of the people are brought within the ambit of the, 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 the infrastructure. And that there is a record of everything. To do that, it will take some time. Yes, there are shortages, and there is a power shortage in about 10 states, but we are working overtime to rectify that. You know, if you, if you go through, if you go through uh, the timelines uh, in, uh, on social media, you will, say, you will see people saying things like, free bijli nahi chahiye. We just want enough electricity to run our day-to-day -day lives. I was reading through some of the angry posts and I played out also some of those posts but Jaiban Singh what do you have to say here apparently this is not something that the Aam Admi Party can be totally held responsible uh, previous governments had made some policy decisions which for which today this is the situation in Punjab thank you very much Farida I will talk not only about Punjab I will talk about JNK also because certain allegations have been made firstly my Puba Mufti ji says ki pure mulk ko bijli deta hai Kashmir. I think that's a very uh, incorrect statement. Pure mulk ko nahi deta hai Kashmir. Pure mulk mein aur bhi bahut log hain. And uh, uh, my friend Ifra, uh, she said that there is a freedom of speech problem over there. She has spoken very voraciously against the government uh, on a national television. If she can do that, so I'm sure everybody else can do that. And as did uh, Omar Abdullah and things like that, I, do, I totally sympathize with the people of the of JNK, especially Kashmiris at this time of Ramadan, they are not having adequate power. But what is happening in JNK is an existential crisis, Farida, and we it is very, very serious. This government of Aam Admi Party, it is a new government, it is inexperienced, and probably it has not been able to handle the things the way it should have been handled. And I would like to tell them at this moment through your channel that this is just the tip of the iceberg. By just talking, things are not going to work out because this power demand is going to increase to 15,000 megawatts in the next one month. And if they are unable to provide what they what is required even now, I shudder to think what is going to happen later on. And this has got a very big effect on the economy of uh, JNK because power is required to run the tube wells on the basis of which the paddy season is uh, going to be affected, adversely affected. On top of it, the, uh, the, the diesel prices are skyrocketing and Punjab has got some of the most expensive diesel. So even the generator sets cannot be, uh, cannot be run uh, uh, cost effectively for the uh, creation of adequate electricity to run the tube wells. So we are going through a very, very bad crisis. And just by talking, Bob is a very dear friend of mine. But just by talking that we will do something and private players and this and that, every year we have a crisis at this time. But the governments have always been able to resolve it and solve it. So we, I really expect that the, this government will also resolve it. I want to remind uh, the, the Aam Admi Party government that they have said that after for April 1, their convener, uh, Arvind Ketriwal, had said there would be no suicide in Punjab. And there have already been 14 or more farmer suicides in Punjab in the last, uh, uh, in the month of April itself. So the situation is very, very serious. It is an existential crisis. They, they have to cut out on their freebies. They have to cut out on moving around and uh, having uh, MOUs and going to Delhi to see the Delhi model and things like that. There is a nice existing Punjab model, which they should apply very efficiently and see to it so that the, the citizens, season, uh, it goes away you know, unaffected. Yes. I, I, I'll tell you, uh, Punj in Punjab, Amritsar, Jalandhar, Ludhiana, Pathan Kot, all these important cities in the state are going through long hours of power cut. People are exasperated. People are saying freebies nahi chahiye, power supply hi de do. Ashwini Swen, now the thing is that, you know, for the sake of our viewers, if we want to understand it, how much of it is the center's responsibility to resolve this and how much can the states do? Uh, well, um, both the parties have to work together and the key is the utilities within the state. So let's look at uh, two parts of the problem. One is the uh, generation uh, plants. Um, right now, as you rightly pointed out, about 40% of the thermal capacity is under maintenance for some repairs. 
So ideally, that should not have happened. This repair should have taken up before the peak demand kicks in. And that is possible. And that's a fault at the utility level. The second part of the problem is uh, coal shortage. As you pointed out, right, the, most of the plants have um, below one week's uh, stockpile at the plant level. And uh, that has multiple problems. Punjab is a geographically disadvantaged state here. It's a landlocked state and the coal mines are far off. So every year there is a, there's a coal shortage situation in Punjab. So, uh, and that's partly because uh, the discoms are not uh, paying. Um, I mean, here in case of Punjab, the distribution and generation is combined with uh, PSPCL. Uh, that's because uh, the, the generators are not able to pay to the coal, com coal miners yes. uh, for coal procurement. And because, because of that, I mean, CA Central Electricity Authority advises that uh, the thermal plants should have a stockpile of 14 to 21 days, ideally. Hmm. And uh, CIL has been in increasing coal production. But despite uh, that, um, most of the plants always run at a uh, below 10-day stockpile. Very important and like you rightly pointed out, a shortage of coal of course has led to a lower generation of power and there is a hike in demand. So these two factors are there but at the same time we do expect elected governments to really pull up their socks and do something about it. We have heard angry citizens, we heard those voices. People are reeling under a real crisis in both these states. Thank you for joining us Mr. Jaiban Singh, Ifrajan, Ababh Greval and Mr. Ashwini Swain for joining us this evening. Let's take a short break here. News and updates continue on the other side. Stay with us.